to an incredible program tonight, Atlanta Live. We have incredible worship, incredible guests. I know tonight's program is going to bless your life. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go unto the house of the Lord. And tonight, wherever you are, whether you're watching by your phone, watching by computer, watching in your living room, you are in the house of the Lord tonight. And I believe that the presence that's in this room is going to come into your home. So I invite you to share with your friends that you're watching. Share on Facebook at WATC.TV. You can find all the ways to watch there, but you want to make sure that you're telling people the good news is being shared tonight right here on Atlanta Live. I know the program and our guests are going to bless you beyond words, especially that we get to kick off with some powerful worship from the amazing Cynthia Washington singing, I Love to Praise Him. Oh, it's all right. Put your hands together, everybody. Woo! Oh, yes. It's an only but a good We give you glory today, God.
that is in this room is translating into your living rooms, your bedroom, wherever you are, your hotel room. I may be Coach Kaylin, but that is Coach Cynthia on the worship stage getting us into the presence of the Lord. And I'm so excited that she is going to continue to lead us in worship tonight. And I'm even more excited or equally as excited to welcome and introduce our first guest tonight, Ladidra Cook. Yeah. Hi, so welcome. Glad to be here so again. glad you are here. And tell us who's with you tonight. Actually, yes, I'm Ladidra Cook, and this is Oscar Harris. He's our intern from the local college. Hi, Oscar. We are so glad you are here with us tonight. Tell us a little bit about you all. Oh, sure, absolutely. My, um, what we do is we talk to teenagers all over this great United States of America, all 50 states, plus the whole wide world. We talk to young people about well, close to Oscar's age. Well, about things like, well, entrepreneurship. Awesome. About bullying. You know, David in the Bible was bullied. Right. But he killed that old giant, that yes. Philistine. So we, we want to share. See, there's so many bad things going on with young people doing things like shoot them up and, you know, just crazy stuff. But what about the th people that are doing the good things, like this young, fine young man? Oscar, and all the teenagers that we, we, we encounter, how we do it, we, we uh, dress um, the youth pastors, and they usually bring in their youth to talk with us about, you know, we go live like we're live here, yeah. and we broadcast, uh, it's called Teen Talk Wonderful. Radio. Awesome. That's so incredible. And I think that any parent watching tonight is understanding that it is tough to raise teenagers today. It's tough to have teenagers today. But the Bible says in Proverbs, it says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are older, they will not depart. But it also says in Ecclesiastes that two is better than one. And so having that support of Teen Talk, and it's Teen Talking, you can find out more information, um, and it's a Facebook show, correct? Actually, it is on Facebook, but we actually come via the web, like www.love860. Well, if you think about love, you'll never forget it. It's www.love, and then think about the number 86, 860. Dot com. That's easy to remember, but we're on the local dial to it. 860 AM, right up from 750 AM. You just keep scrolling and you'll get to 860 AM on the dial. And then we have iTunes, iHearts. But the main thing is we want to give pe young people an opportunity. Like I'd like for Austin to hear his voice because he's an intern with us. So we get interns to come on and that gives them an opportunity to learn about hosting. Yes. You are a beautiful host, may I say. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> and that's such a, important to have those opportunities for teenagers to learn life skills. And I'm so excited to hear more from Oscar um, as we proceed tonight. But what made you have this calling to birth teen talk? There's always a story behind the, the dream coming to pass. So what really started you down this journey to create the Teen Talk Radio? Oh, that's a great question. See, what happened is I'm a, a teacher by trade. That's what I, I went to school for. Awesome. And so, yeah, you know, but the best teacher is a mom and a dad. That's right. the best teacher. But anyway, I went to school for that. And so I teach, like, special ed. But then I realized the whole world is special. Yes. And so and one of the c things they tell us to do is they say, well, you need to allow the children to do something called express, have expression. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a state standard for students to express right. themselves. Well, on the radio, my goodness, you get a chance to hear young people all over the world express the good things. They'll say like, well, I'm working on my own business. Or they'll say, I'm in college doing great things. I'm making, like Oscar, for example. And we realize everybody's not going to go to college, okay? Because my grandmother, she only went sixth grade, but she was so smart. Right. She only went to sixth grade, but she was still smart. But the smartest person in the whole wide world is a person, I believe, that accepts Jesus right. as their personal savior. 
That's the smartest, because guess what? It's either hell or heaven. That's what I believe. So we tell the young people right away that it is a faith base. We do believe in the Lord, and we won't take that back. Right. We want to apologize for that. That's powerful yeah. <laughs> to be sharing that message today. And, you know, statistics show that younger and younger, it is children who have to be saved younger and younger before statistically that they will accept Christ. So this is such a great opportunity for kids and teens to discuss a great resource for parents. But, Oscar, I want to hear from you. How has teen um, talk radio impacted you and what made you want to intern? Hello, everybody listening. My name is Oscar Harris. So first off, I wanted, I needed an internship for my school to graduate, and then I found Ms. D, and I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity and blessing my heart. Hallelujah. And also, being on the, um, talking to kids that are younger than me, as everybody knows, kids, we all go through stuff, and we just need an outing to talk about how it's hard out there with bullying and all the different things. So I could definitely say, if I was, a little younger, I'm 23, so if I was like 17 or 18 about to graduate, I would want to come on Teen Talk and definitely have somebody to talk to. That is awesome, and that's so important. I think that one of the things that in society today, so many people are isolated, teenagers are isolated, and parents, you may be watching tonight and saying, I want to talk to my teen, or I have a teen in my life. Maybe you don't have any personal children, but you know teens at your church, you know people who are struggling, they need that outlet to talk. Because if we can teach teenagers to be powerful, we can truly change the world. You know, I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were teenagers who were changing their world and standing firm in their faith, but they obviously had the support of one another, just like Teen Talk Radio has. And so one thing I would love to talk about, what are your common things that you talk about on Teen Talk Radio? Absolutely. Some of the common things that we talk about. But may I please say this about Oscar, please? Yes. He is graduating. That is like an hallelujah. We can have a clap. Yes, that is amazing. Yes. I have to clap for him because he's a young black man. Yes. And we're so thankful because we've been praying. And so you know what, so congratulations. I will shake your hand. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and where are you graduating from? Uh, Clayton State University in Morrow, Georgia. Awesome. Yay. That is awesome. So we proclaim the, the, the good news, and we're so thankful for Oscar. But to your point, we talk about entrepreneurship. We talk about, well, why should I obey my parents? I know everything. Well, really? But the Bible says obey your parents. Right. Because it's right. It's just the right, right thing to do. And so we talk about, like, why should I uh, clean my room? Right. Why should I make friends like me? Why should I tell people that Jesus Christ is the only way? Because when I go to college, we know we talk about Buddha. We talk about, um, you know, other religions. But the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. So right. it, everybody that comes on now, we don't, it's not, it's like this. We have interviewed people that are Muslim, but they know where we're coming from. Right. They're my friends, but Jesus, I'm, we're Jesus all day long. That's it. And I'm not right. apologizing for it. Right. And so... To, to your point, though, the thing about Teen Talk that I really love is it gives people a voice. And it's not just a black thing, because we got our white sisters and brothers. They come on, they're coming on in, in uh, August. And then we have our uh, Asian, you know, so it's like this right here. My grandmama said, red, yellow, black, and white. Right. She said, you got to be born again, no matter what. So teenagers come in all colors. Right. So we interview yes. them all. <laughs> right. But that is incredible to sh represent diversity from all platforms. And one thing that I love that you guys are doing is talking about topics, but helping you create a firm foundation from a young age to stand on. I love the story in Matthew. It says, the wise man builds his house upon the rock, but the foolish man builds his house upon the sand. And statistically, we see that more and more young adults are leaving the church. But then you have great people like Oscar who are are there because they have built a firm foundation to become all that Christ has called them to be and that they will not depart when they're older Absolutely. they will not depart what what air times how often are you guys doing teen talk radio and where can parents again find out about listening to this thank you for asking we come on see I work during the daytime I teach school but everybody knows I'm praying to become a principal one day if it's the Lord's will hey, that's awesome <laughs> yes but 
at this point, we come on at 1 o'clock from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. And how we do it, we have interns like Oscar come on to learn about the show, but we also have um, the, te the young people to come on, and we have conversations. We want it to sound like a conversation. But right halfway through the, co the show, well, it comes on uh, www.love, think about love, 860. It comes on iTunes, iHearts, and on your radio, love 860. That. And so we'd love for people to tune in and you want your kids to be a part, that's fine too. But what we really love is the idea that right after that, we have this Bible and we say the 23rd Psalm. And I was going to ask if it's okay for, for Oscar for to write Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's what he does. He, he tells about himself and then he talks, asks questions so professionally. We want them to to learn. Okay, Because yes. years, ago, years when we're gone, they're still going to be talking about Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, Oscar. Okay, thank you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank oh, you. man, I'm going to clap. You know that what? That is powerful. And oh, I love yeah. that scripture Thank because so I much. think that that scripture, if you can get that, like you're saying, Oscar, if you can get Psalm 23 within you, then you have something to stand with in life because it talks about going through the valley and God being with you. And I, that concept of God being with you is the most powerful thing that we can learn from a young age through Teen Talk, through this resource. I know that there are teenagers watching tonight and maybe they're with their parents. What's one piece of advice I'm going to ask you and I'm going to ask you, Oscar, each give one piece of advice to a teenager tonight who is struggling with their faith. If you're a teenager struggling with your faith, what I would do, I'm not you, but if I were you, I would get on my teenage e knees because the Bible says every knee is going to bow anyway and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But I would get on my knees and I would say, God, if you're real, show me a sign. If you're real, you know, you can let me see a red bird, you know, or a blue bird. If you're real, let me hear a horn break. If you're real, let somebody knock at the door. You know, you can fleece God. They did it in the Bible. And then I believe if you get, if you really want to know he's real, He'll speak to you. That's what I believe. Yes. I really believe that. And we have told the young people that if they learn that 23rd Psalm, we're going to give them 5 or $10, maybe 20 if we can stretch it, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that. So we're going to put some money in their hand, but they, have, they can't mess it up. They have to say it word by word. Awesome. If our guests come on and... Uh, they said they'll do it. They're going to learn. So we got some teenagers that are going to commit it. Because once you learn it in your heart, nobody can take it away from you. Absolutely. Hide thy word in thy heart. So Absolutely. that's very powerful, very strong. Even Jesus used the word that was in his heart to stand against the enemy. What about you, Oscar? What's one piece of advice? Um, I would definitely say to know that you are not alone. And there's also other young people out there going through the same thing. So I would definitely say to try to find some people that are like-minded like you and to know that journey, the journey with Christ is a long journey. And that's basically it. That's really powerful. I love that, that we need to walk on this journey, not only with God, because in Psalms 23, it says he's our shepherd and he leads us, but we need a community. We need support. We need things like Teen Talk Radio so that we can discuss and create that group of friends because we can't do it alone. Even I truly believe, like I mentioned earlier, that Daniel with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all those guys were strong teenagers. Why? Because they had a group of people who believed in them and were with them tonight. So you guys make sure you go check out Teen Talk Radio. Oscar, Ladidra, thank you guys for being on tonight. We have so enjoyed hearing about Teen Talk. Now we get to continue on um, with worship with Cynthia Washington singing Master Plan. And after that, which Master Plan, what a perfect song after this segment. <laughs> after that, we get to hear an incredible interview hosted by Stacy Robinson and Frank Shelton. You don't want to miss it. So let's worship together and and have another incredible interview. You may be wondering 
what's gonna happen next how you gonna fix this with no where to turn with the way so much weight on your shoulder You don't understand
welcome back to Atlanta Live. I'm Stacy Robinson, and I'm here with my longtime friend and buddy, yes. evangelist Frank Shelton. Oh, Stacy, <laughs> if I come into money, you're in the will. <laughs> I publicly want to go on live to say thank you. You uh, really helped me uh, oh. since I quit my Capitol job. You were the one, and not only that, um, you know, you're still the one that we're totally linked with. Oh. My mom still helps on occasion with some books. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but you have not only been consistent, you've just been a delight to work with. So Thank what you, an Frank. honor for me. It's like full circle. Yeah, it's been an honor yeah. for me to, to work with you over these years uh, with your speaking engagements yeah. and your revivals. And, yeah. you know, there aren't too many revivals out there yeah. anymore. The, tra the traveling evangelist is... Um, Slim picking. Yeah, yeah. But, so but revival, I believe we carry revival. Yes. And as a kid, I had dreams of doing the stadiums and God mm -hmm. gave grace. And, and you have. And we have. And, yes. And, and, and he did. Um, but at the same time, you know, it was today at Cracker Barrel. There was a sweet waitress. She was about 60. And I just loved on her and encouraged her mm -hmm. and said, God bless you. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and she said, Pastor Frank, thank you. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I never told her I was a minister. Oh. I didn't tell her I was in the ministry. I didn't even <laughs> tell her I was a preacher or an evangelist. But I think sometimes we say it best when we say nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone once told me, if you have to tell them who you are, you're either doing it wrong or you're not that big of a deal. So <laughs> I'm just, Jesus is well, the big deal. And I just remember that when we had conversations before you stepped out on yeah. faith, that it, it, it is a big deal to yeah. make that decision. I mean, I know it's, it's you knew you you knew God was speaking to you, yeah. um, but it was a tremendous step of faith. It was. And God has used you in, in huge ways. Thank you. And you have, obviously, we're here to talk about your brand new book called Urgency. Yeah. Um, but over the years, you have spoken at Mandela Stadium for 100,000 people. Yeah. You've, you've gone um, in places where, you know, wise people don't go, right. to, you know, preach to the Taliban. Yeah. And, and you've put yourself in, in places that others would consider, people consider very dangerous. Yeah. And you've, you know, you've been, um, you, you've had ministry and relationships with people in Hollywood and certainly D.C. and the government. Um, so tell us a little bit about your ministry leading up to where you are today. And then in particular, the, um, the moments before the world kind of stopped yeah. in March of 2020 and what God was laying on your heart at that time yeah. and then ultimately the book. Well, thank you. I, I knew as a young person, got saved at seven at a church running 33. Hmm. And in 1982, the pastor had a challenge whoever brought the most kids to vacation Bible school would win a prize. <laughs> and I couldn't sleep for a week. and. Satan was teasing me, you'll have no friends. And Monday, I got a few no's, but I had three visitors. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, I had five first-time visitors. Wednesday, I had 11 first-time visitors. Mm -hmm. Thursday, I brought 18. Mm -hmm. And Friday, God used me to bring 22 kids to church wow. at a church running 33. And you were how old? 10 years old. 10 years old. And wow. three years later, we won a Rambo II contest. I had a better <laughs> chance of getting struck by lightning. <laughs> But if God be for you, who could be against you? I entered it. My godmother tells me the next day she got the same contest at her theater. She saw Rambo too. And I said, Judy, if I win, I'll take you. And she rolled her eyes, if I win, I'll take you. Because we got a better <laughs> chance of getting struck by life. <laughs> Two months later, she's screaming, pack your bags. We're going to LA. She won. Wow. So then we're sharing the gospel with Stallone. <laughs> And then 30 years from the month, Stacy, from 82 when I brought 22, mm -hmm. is now 2012, and I'm the International Evangelism Chairman of the 2012 Olympic Games in London. Wow. How'd that happen? It, that was God. <laughs> it was God. It was the Lord, because I had a better chance of getting struck by light. <laughs> and uh, the guys got pictures with Kobe Bryant, LeBron mm -hmm. James, and Mike Krzyzewski, the coach from Duke, is coach USA, and that's just the basketball team. Mm-hmm. And then 2016, I'm at Rio, and we saw 1,054 people get saved at the Olympics, and wow. I'm a chaplain there. 
Then we're supposed to be in Tokyo and COVID through a curve. Mm -hmm. Then I get on staff with Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. And for four and a half, five years, I'm the DC, Maryland, Delaware coordinator. Mm -hmm. And then had the honor to serve with Franklin Graham. And your brother-in-law has a big position there. <laughs> and the Grahams are my heroes. Mm -hmm. But I, and then Sean Hannity calls and can you come on Fox News? Mm -hmm. So I tell people I didn't start out at Fox. I didn't start out with Franklin Graham. I didn't start out with the finest athletes in the world. I didn't start out with the famous. I started out with friends yeah, in yeah. my backyard. Yeah. But if you're faithful when no one's looking, mm -hmm. you'll share Jesus if everyone's looking. Mm -hmm. And someone said the word ego is edging God out. So I'm on a missions trip, not an ego trip. Yeah, but I've yeah. learned if I promote him, he may bring me along for the ride. Yeah. So I, I did 20 years with Capitol Hill, as you know, and you walked me through that time. And, and <laughs> I think in heaven, you're going to get some extra credit. <laughs> and, uh, but I had the honor to work in four White Houses in a volunteer position. I worked for the U.S. Senate. I was an aide to the governor of Maryland. I was a speechwriter to the House Majority Leader of Congress. Mm -hmm. And I did two years with the U.S. Capitol Police, and I left by faith, left retirement, 401k, health insurance, as if it never existed. And that's a lot of people teach faith, but I live by faith. Mm -hmm. And now we have a TV show called By Faith. Yeah. I got a radio show, By Faith. I told a mega pastor, you may outfinance me, but you will not outfaith me. <laughs> faith is the currency of heaven. Without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. And um, so then... I was booked in 10 countries in 12 months. Mm. I just preached to 120,000 in Mandela Stadium in Uganda. President Daniel Ortega's wife had just invited me, had the pandemic not happened, mm -hmm. to preach to 700,000 in one sermon. Mm. So three sermons in Africa is a third of a million. Mm -hmm. 700,000 would have been Nicaragua. Four sermons mm -hmm. is one plus million people. Wow. And I got a D in public speaking, <laughs> but God uses goofballs and I'm one of them. But having said that, um, I knew the walls were closing mm -hmm. and that's why I wrote the book Urgency. Mm -hmm. I just, since childhood, I knew the hourglass was ticking, but now it's quicker. Mm -hmm. And people are finally seeing what I saw because who leaves Washington? Who leaves mm -hmm. a government job? Who leaves pay, prestige and perks mm -hmm. unless you truly heard from God? And even since you've left Washington and yes. went full-time ministry, God has still put you in ministry in D.C. Yes. You were even on the White House press corps at one yeah, point, Yeah, I right? was. I helped cover Obama and briefly Trump, so that's correct. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, for four years, my friend was leading the White House Cabinet Bible Study. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know there was a Cabinet Bible mm -hmm. Study. And then he would give me the notes, and the next week... I'm leading the White House Cabinet Bible Study Note to state senators in Delaware. Yeah. And I'm now co-helping with Annapolis, but influencers need influence. Mm -hmm. And people of prominence need prayer. Right. And further, they need Jesus. But <laughs> this book, uh, you can go to Amazon.com mm -hmm. and just type in Urgency Frank Shelton. It's now available. I'm telling you, it's going to be a game changer for some. Mm -hmm and a life changer for others. It'll offend some. It will, but you know, <laughs> That's Jesus, okay, right? <laughs> Jesus offended some. I was connecting the dots a year ago, and then I got an award at the United Nations. They were telling me then what this plan is. There's a 20, 30 plan, this whole reset. And if you think that the world at large has your best interest at heart, you're, you're, you're mistaken. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's still some good godly people in government and there's some dangerous people in government. Mm -hmm. And so this whole trust the science, the Lord said, no, you probably better trust the savior. Yeah. And I just say this in love, you know, we're not out to hurt people. I'm not out to call out names, but they need Jesus mm -hmm. and we need Jesus. Yeah. And uh, so more than ever, if your house, your heart, your home is not in order, mm -hmm. I think God gave us a space of grace last year. He could have came Mm -hmm. But if the NBA falling and Major League Baseball falling and the NFL falling and NASCAR falling and all our mm -hmm. empty stadiums doesn't catch your attention, mm -hmm. you know, things you just thought were forever yeah. are now like at a standstill. The only one still standing is God. Yeah. And I feel like he's saying, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a kid, we played that game ready or not. Here I come. Mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger was not the first to say, I'll be back. It was Jesus. He's on his way. And, uh, you know, 
a lot of people are putting their trust in man or a vaccine um, or their money, but we need to trust in the Almighty. Mm -hmm. The answer is not in Trump, it's in the triune God. Mm -hmm. And I can picture mm -hmm. Gabriel licking his lips. Mm -hmm. And while some are looking for the trumpet, I'm listening for the trumpet, yeah. you know? And the answer is not even in Biden, it's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's not in Harris, it's in heaven. Mm -hmm. And even Pence needs prayer. I mean, all of us are yes. doomed without Jesus. Yes. And that's when you hear me say, we're playing checkers, but the chess table is the real battle. It's mm -hmm. not Redskins versus the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. It's not even LeBron, is he better than Kobe? Mm -hmm. It's Satan versus the Savior. Mm -hmm. And we need to get our heart because hell is too long to be wrong. Mm. Wow. Um, we only have a couple minutes left. Yeah. And so I just want to give it to you, Frank. Okay. And you just share what the Lord lays on your heart to yeah. share. And um, Amen. Well, I, I'd like to just share this with you. Um, you know, on every bathroom, Stacy, uh, if you're in an airplane, and I'll, I'll be on a plane tonight back to Washington, mm -hmm. if you really have to use the bathroom, are you still an American? <laughs> no, you're Russian because you got to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you're in the lavatory, are you an American or are you Russian? European. <laughs> Just keep it you up. got a million of them, I know. <laughs> and what happens when you're done? You're actually finished. And you think, that's crazy, but this is for somebody. On every lavatory airplane door, it's true, it will say occupied or vacant. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me in the pandemic, usually occupied stinks to high heaven because they're taking care of business. But the Lord told me what breaks his heart is not the church that's still taking care of business, occupied. Mm -hmm. It's the church who's been vacant, mm -hmm. playing it safe, not preaching Jesus mm -hmm. saves, over a virus with a 99% survival rate. Mm -hmm. And I just want to challenge the viewer two things. If you're a Christian, are you on post? Jesus said, having done all stand. He said, occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. So shine a light, love loud, and preach Jesus. And then if you're not saved, if you've never trusted Christ, coming to Jesus is as easy as the ABCs. You just admit that you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. We've all dropped the ball. B, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But the catch is even the demons believe and tremble with fear. The C is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So I just want to tell you, God loves you. He's the only way to heaven. He's on his way really, really soon. And I want to encourage you to get right with God. More than trying to sell a book, more than you trying to read a book, I want you to fall in love with the star of the book, the holy book, the Bible, Jesus himself. He's the star of the show. And uh, just repeat this simple prayer. If you're not sure that you're going to heaven, today's your day. God loves you. Just whisper this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. You're the Savior. I've heard that you died for the world. But I realized tonight on Atlanta Live with Stacy, if it was just me, Jesus died for me. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. I repent from my past. Save my soul. Your red blood covers my dark sins and you make it like new fallen snow. Save my soul. Take me to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that, I'd encourage you to reach out to the prayer partners tonight and just tell them you just gave your life to God and you can't go wrong when you live for the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. Wow. And I believe people have come to the Lord Amen. through this conversation and your prayer. And um, just thank you, Frank, for the book. Amen. I just encourage everybody Amen. to go ahead and get a copy of the book. And uh, Frank has had years and years of ministry Amen. that have been poured into uh, millions of people's lives well, and wants you. to pour into your life through the book. So we're going to... Um, thank you. Oh, you, you're very thank special you. to thank me. You. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. So we're going to uh, go to music and uh, pray the Lord will bless you as the program continues. One of my favorite books in the Bible is Jeremiah. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I praise God that he knows my name and he knows your name. Glory to God.
you thankful tonight that God knows your name? I feel like there are some of you tonight watching and you feel forgotten, you feel hopeless, you feel like you've come to a place in your life that nobody cares what's happening to you. But can I let you know something? God knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. And guess what? He still wants you. We've heard so much tonight. Frank Shelton has talked to us about being saved, asking the Lord into your heart. There is no greater relationship that you can have than Jesus Christ. So if you've made that decision, make sure you give us a call tonight, 770-398-28, 770-398-28. There's no greater guarantee in this unsure world than knowing that your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And tonight I'm so excited that as we come to the end of this program, we get to hear from Cynthia herself who's led us in worship. So Cynthia Washington, help me welcome you her to the set at home. And you can do a living room clap. You can do a Facebook clap, whatever. Welcome, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish I could show you her shoes. I mean, it's about the Lord. Shoe cam. But we need shoe cam because <laughs> your shoes are fabulous. Thank you, thank you. Yes, so your worship, I mean, some people just got it. 
and you got it. And it has been so powerful tonight. You've been leading us in worship. But before I go into that, you know, I loved reading about your testimony, how God brought you out of addiction. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are many tonight watching who are in addiction and they're like, how does God know my name? Mm -hmm. So tell me about um, God. Tell us about God bringing you out of addiction and how that shaped you. Well, it started um, with low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the foundation mm -hmm. of addiction and wanting to be accepted, wanting to be loved, wanting not to be despised and rejected mm -hmm. by people. And, and so looking in all of the wrong places for that validation and affirmation, um, I um, began looking in all the wrong faces and, and ended up in a relationship that was abusive, mm -hmm. not just to me, but abusive to my children. Mm -hmm. And that failure as a mother mm -hmm. caused me to spiral even d further mm -hmm. and downward and in downward in, in, into the depths of hell. And, and I believe my favorite scripture is that all things work together yes. for the good of them who love the Lord yeah. and are called according to his purpose. Yes. Because I grew up in a house where my mother went to church. We were drugged to church. Yeah. You know? And uh, my grandfather was a pastor. So I knew the 23rd Psalm, back to the young man that was here. I knew the 23rd Psalm, and I don't know when I learned it. Right. But my grandparents and my parents instilled that word in me so that while I was in my mess, mm -hmm. I knew to call out to him. Mm. While I was in my mess, I was still going to church. I was not proud of the person that I was, but God allowed me. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation Amen. for them that are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I would go to church, but I couldn't tell anybody what I was going through, but I could tell Jesus. Amen. I could pray to him and say, Lord God, this is not the person yes. that you created me to be. Mm -hmm. And I need you to help me. I need you to show yourself to be real to me. Right. I heard that you could save. I heard that you can deliver. Now I need you to deliver me. Mm -hmm. And a still small voice just came and says, if you make your bed in hell, I'll be there. I didn't know that was scripture, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what I heard. And then as I began to pray and I reached out to God and, and I prayed to him and, and, and by this time my children are adults and, and I started to see some of the same behaviors in them and I asked God, let me live so that they can see what it looks like to overcome. That's powerful. <laughs> Say that again. Let me live mm -hmm. so my children and my children's children can see what it looks like to be an overcomer because we overcome mm -hmm. huh, by the word yes. of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. Yes. And so as my children were getting older and I saw them and I began to think that God allowed me to go through what I went through so that I could recognize it on someone else right. and I can be a testimony to them. Then God gave me Isaiah 43 and 18 and says, behold, now I'm doing a new thing. Amen. And now it shall spring forth. Yes. I'll make a way for you in the wilderness and prepare uh, rivers for you in the desert. So I began to walk by faith. Mm and walked out and then I looked back and, I, and when I look back at where he brought me from, that's why I love to praise him. Right. There is, a pray, there, there is a blessing in the praise because God looked at my heart mm -hmm. and he saw what I really had need of. Right. And he promised I've been your husband. Mm -hmm. I've been there for everything I needed. He's been El Shaddai. Yeah. The Lord God, the all-sufficient Father. He's been all of those things. And, and so now in retrospect, I rejoice. I don't brag about where I come from, but I rejoice in the power of overcoming. I rejoice that I can call myself overcomer. I rejoice because my children have overcome. I rejoice because my grandchildren are not entering in. We drew the line in the sand. Amen. And the book stops here. Amen. So we give him glory today. We thank God for, for all things, and, and he does all things well. Right. We can trust him. 
Yeah, I, I mean, everything. <laughs> Just ditto of what she said, <laughs> everything. And I love that you, two things that you said that really everything stood out. But two things that I really want to highlight for those watching tonight, and you can find out more about her and her worship. But I, I feel like there are people watching tonight and they're too ashamed to go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is, you said something so powerful. You didn't have to go tell everybody, but you told the Lord mm -hmm. and he saw your effort. And I feel like, you know, when we take one step towards God, he takes a thousand steps towards mm -hmm. us. And God has grace. Even if you're not in a perfect place, God has grace. And then I love that you began to be a catalyst in your family yes. line to make a turn and say, this may have run in my family, but it's going to run out on me. And you, you created that turn. What would you say to somebody tonight who, who it's been a generational curse in the next few moments, it's been a generational curse, but they feel like it's them who can make the change. What would you mm -hmm. say to encourage them? Embrace the generation generational blessings. Mm. We come from a people who survived. Mm. Everything that society can throw at us, we are the strongest of the strong. We survived, mm -hmm. okay? But the church, I would say this, God didn't allow the church doors to close so that we could go back to doing the same thing we've always Amen. done and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. There are people who are hurting. Yep. There are people full of talent, mm -hmm. full of faith, but because of their checkered past. Mm -hmm. But all of us have mm -hmm. sinned and come yes. short of the glory of God. Yep. So do unto them what you would want mm -hmm. done unto you. Yes. Look at that sister as though she's your sister yes. or as though she's your mother. Embrace her. Mm -hmm. And those that are struggling, I promise you, I promise you, that if you choose him and make him your choice today, he will not disappoint you. Jeremiah, my favorite book, says even in Jeremiah 18 that he went to the potter's house and, and there was clay on the potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, the clay was marred, but it was marred in the potter's hand. Mm -hmm. And that is what I say for my 18-year-olds. For the parents of those 18-year-olds, yeah. it looks like, it may not look like what you thought it should be, mm -hmm. but again, it's in, and they are in his hand. Then when they get to be my children's age, 29 and, and so forth, 29 and 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. Powerful. <laughs> Powerful. On. He's got a plan. He Amen. does have a plan. He has a plan, <laughs> and he has anointed you to preach the gospel. And so thank you for blessing us tonight, worshiping, leading us in worship. You guys make sure to check out Cynthia Washington. Thank you for being with us tonight. Remember, God loves you, and we do too. If you've made a commitment to God tonight, call that number on the screen. And remember, there's no greater relationship than that with Jesus Christ for eternity. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great night.